Hello, and welcome to another episode of Paving the Way podcast. I'm Seth Demoa, a.k.a. Essay. I'm here with Kenny Jean-Louis, also known as KJL. And today we're here with a basketball legend, played back in the days for uh, a very popular team, Champlain. We'll get more into that, and it went on to do good things out uh, down south. Uh, please give it up for Pierre-Marie Altidor Cespedes. Merci, mais merci d'avoir accepté l'invitation. On t'a demandé, puis aussi chaque semaine, à chaque fois qu'on sort un épisode, les personnes disent OK, oh, ce guest-là est nice, mais Pima qui est où, Pima qui est où. On n'avait pas chaté de demander, donc merci encore. Donc yeah. la, la première question qu'on demande à tout le monde, c'est When's the passion for basketball started for you? Well, for me, it started. Um, J'avais quatre ans quand j'ai commencé à jouer, so um, I don't even have memories of my life without basketball. Maybe just a few, but like, since I can remember, basketball is a part of my life. So, love at first sight. Dès le début, dès que j'ai commencé, c'était comme, je voulais rien faire d'autre. Mm -hmm. So, j'ai eu la piqûre, puis that's it, man. Je voulais pas jouer au soccer, je voulais pas jouer au foot, je voulais rien savoir de rien. <laughs> je joue au basket. <laughs> Did you know, did you, when you were young, were you like, you know what, I, I could go somewhere with this sport, you know, if I keep going at it? When I was young, like, not really. Well, in my heart, I did, but mm -hmm. I was super short and super skinny. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were like, why are you playing ball? Like, you're so small and you're so skinny. But like, in my heart, like, I knew I had a vision and I knew I could get to where I wanted to go. So, um, yeah, thank God it happened for me, but... It was like a vision that I had in my heart since I was very young. Okay. So you I, wasn't, I wasn't letting anyone get in the way of that vision that I have for yeah. myself. So. Okay. Okay. Et ta première équipe, ta première équipe, c'était quoi au primaire, secondaire? C'était primaire, c'était les Aiglons Brossard parce que j'habite à Brossard. So moi, j'avais quatre ans, mais j'étais trop jeune pour commencer. Mes parents demandaient comme mieux, s'il vous plaît, laissez le jouer comme il obsédait avec le basket. So, j'ai commencé avec des gars qui avaient genre 7-8 ans. So, moi, j'étais comme beaucoup plus jeune qu'eux, mais il n'y avait pas d'équipe de mon âge. Mais ils m'ont accepté, so je jouais avec des gars plus vieux. OK. Oh. Was, there, was there anyone that was, I guess, helping you, um, kind of guiding you to, like, how you had to go with practices, uh, on-court stuff, or, or was it just you or your friend? Like, who? It, was, it was a mix. Like, it was me, but also, like, I had an older brother that played in the States, too, so obviously, like, You know, he, he would always tell me things and let me know what I was supposed to do. And um, my uncle, too, I had an uncle that played ball in Peru, so he would guide me, too. So those were the two principal guys along the way that I could say from the beginning were, were there. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to high school, obviously, my coaches, and then at Champlain with J.D. and Peter. So it just kept going. But, yeah, along the way, I obviously had a lot of help. You can't go anywhere without help, so. Okay. Et au secondaire, tu as joué pour quelle équipe au secondaire? Secondaire, c'était de secondaire 1 à 4, c'était Brébeuf. Puis en secondaire 4, mes notes étaient trop faibles, donc je n'ai pas pu finir mon 5 à Brébeuf. C'est là que je suis allé à Sun Youth pendant un an. Puis euh, c'est ça, dans l'équipe de Sun Youth, il y avait Damien, il y avait Sheree, il y avait plein de bons joueurs, il y avait Dwayne. C'était comme une grosse équipe. So, J'ai joué à Sun Youth pendant un an, secondaire 5. So, mon secondaire, c'est Brébeuf, Sun Youth. So was it was it so was it at Sun Youth where I guess the exposure started or was it at Quebec? Why you Quebec? Um, about exposure, like you know, the Quebec League yeah. wasn't that big at the time, so there's always like a few teams. But um, I would say exposure started once. Well, we had tournaments with Sun Youth in the states, but I'd say with Champlain mostly. Like exposure started like getting a little bit. Okay, bigger. and why did you start? Why did you decide to go to Champlain and not? Because you said you played with Damien and all these guys yeah. that went to Vanier. Yeah. So why did you end up going to Champlain? Well, for me, it was like a mixture of two things. Like it was close to home. Like it sounds, it sounds crazy, but like I just needed to take a bus and I was there. Mm -hmm. And also like Champlain was an underdog school and like I'm an underdog by, by nature. So for me, it's yeah. like at that time, Champlain was not Dawson. It wasn't Momo. It was like getting there, but not really at the okay. same level. So for me, it was like, all right, man, let me go there. And then I knew John D'Angelis since I was like 13. So me and him had built a relationship over like five years. So that was a big factor too. So okay. did, yeah. you, did you have any challenges, I guess, going from 
because going from boy birth to son youth, I'm, I'm guessing was pretty different when it comes Super to different. basketball. Yeah, so what was the challenges that you had to like work on? It was a huge challenge. Like first and foremost, like at the birth, like I, I was basically playing a lot. And then when I got to Sun Youth, like I wasn't starting and I wasn't playing much. So it's like, I had to just like learn how to, you know, whenever your name is called, just go out there and try to do something. But like, I wasn't, I wasn't really playing that much um, at Sun Youth. So it was, it was a little bit different because I was used to just running the team. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, all right, I'm just going to have to sit back and try to see, you know, how I can help the team win. But the team was stacked. So. Yeah. Puis, puis la transition de Sun Youth à Champlain, c'est, c'était comment en plus avec tous les, les gars qui étaient déjà là ou ton Oh man, c'est un, peu, c'est un peu similaire parce que ma première année de Champlain, c'était vraiment l'équipe de Bernard puis de Mohamed. So, comme mon rôle n'était pas vraiment important non plus cette année-là. So, même affaire qu'à, qu'à Sun Youth, juste comme tu fais ce que tu as à faire, quand on t'appelle, tu, tu joues du, le meilleur basket que tu peux puis comme tu attends ta chance. So, mais c'était une c'est, c'est, c'était bon pour juste voir c'était quoi le niveau du cégep comparé au secondaire puis comme m'ajuster un peu. So, c'était une bonne année de comme observer puis voir comme ce que je pouvais faire. Là. Uh, you said you knew JD from, uh, since you were what, young? And, 13. Yeah, 13, right? And then, yes. so how was it being coached by him at Champlain? Was it difficult, the fact that you, you knew him before? or Because we, we, everyone knows JD was pretty, you know, he's a really good coach, but he's a hard, you know, he gets yeah. on his players. Yeah, so how was it being coached by him? For me, like, to be honest, it wasn't really difficult because um, he had high expectations, but I, I was used to having high expectations my whole life. So for me, it wasn't like, you know, running at 6 a.m., going to mm-hmm. Mont Royal. Like, for me, it's like, all right, you just got to do what you got to do. So yeah. um, I guess it depends on also who you are as a person. Like, a challenge for me might not be a challenge for someone else and something that's easy for someone else might be hard for me so you know it kind of depends on who you are and uh yeah for me it wasn't tough being coached by by jd yeah. but i i know i heard that it was tough <laughs> for other people yeah. and i'm not taking anything away so i i guess it just depends on who you are yeah, yeah. c'est juste que on regardait tes highlights puis aussi j'ai entendu tout le monde parle de toi les plus vieux puis on voyait que tu faisais tu jouais sans on va dire conscience puis on sait comment JD est, puis on dirait, lui, il aime pas ça quand les personnes font comme des moves et tout. So, de, de devoir faire ces moves-là sans penser, puis c'est facile pour toi, c'est comme impressionnant, hein, parce que moi, j'ai joué pour JD un an, puis euh, faire des moves, puis et tout, il aime pas vraiment ça. Si tu fais ci et là, fais la passe, si tu peux shooter, shoot, mais faire des moves, il y avait seulement une personne dans mon équipe qui pouvait faire comme ces genres de moves-là. So, c'est vraiment impressionnant de voir tes highlights, puis quand les personnes me parlaient de toi, genre. Ah, oh, mais c'est gentil, mais moi, j'étais, j'étais cette personne-là dans l'équipe à mon temps, right? Yeah. L'année d'avant, si vous voulez, il ne m'aurait pas laissé, mais comme, même qu'on a eu un meeting au début de la saison, est-ce que John, il a dit comme, OK, comme, tu vas être le point central de l'attaque, il va falloir que tu sois plus agressif. So, c'est comme si il m'avait comme donné le green light dès le début, puis il a dit, oh, juste joue ton basket. Puis c'est ça qui m'a aidé à le faire, parce que même depuis, je ne l'ai pas fait. So, moi, je n'étais pas le genre de joueur qui, qui arrivait et c'est comme « yo, it's my team, come get out the way ». Moi, j'étais plus un joueur comme « relax », mais comme si, à mettons, on me disait « ok, vas-y, j'y allais », mais si on ne me disait pas, moi, j'étais plus quelqu'un qui restait comme je, « je restais dans mon spot so, ». Ouais, j'ai eu l'aide de, du coach puis aussi mes teammates. Il faut que tu aies des teammates qui soient « chill » avec le fait que tu fais tes, tes moves parce que yo, si tes teammates ne veulent pas que tu fasses tes moves puis il y a comme un, un vibe bizarre, tu ne peux pas le faire non plus. So, c'est un mélange de comme le coach, les teammates, tout le monde. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, great memories, man. And, and, play, and playing on a, a stacked team like that, I, for sure it must have been hard in pra- Like, not hard, but I mean competitive. You know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of egos, a lot of pride, a lot of, you know, get out of the way, it's my time to shine. How did you get, how did you, I guess, blend into that with your kind of, you know, game and then, you know, allow it to be cool? Yeah, yeah me, like, I was a, a quiet, off the court, I used to talk all the time and joke around, but on the court, like, I'm quiet. I don't like to talk. I just focus on what I have to do. So for me, it was just like the competitive side is fun, but mm-hmm. I'm a competitor, but like in a quiet way, like I'm not going to like scream and be in your face about it, but like I'm competing every possession. So it's like, it was just, I guess my nature, just go out there and do your best at all times. That's kind of what I do all the time, regardless. So yeah. um, for me, it's, it was just dialing in and just being like, just focus on doing your best. Okay. And, um, also, sorry, Kenny, a question before. What did you do to get better? 
but like besides Champlain, did you, cause this is a, something that Kenny likes to ask a lot, which I think is a good yeah. question. Like, did you play basketball, like practice, like, you know, workouts like crazy or did you just play at the park? Like, what did you good do to question. get better? For me, everyone's different. As Kenny said, it's, it's very yeah. true. But for me, it was just being kind of like absorbed by the game. Like if I finish school, I'm just going to go home, watch film. I used to love like practicing, playing, but also aside from that, like I would just watch tapes and like always have a ball in my hands. I used to have like a, it's not there anymore. I used to have like a rim in my basement. So I would just dribble, mess around. But like, it was always for me, like kind of like subconscious flow, like not consciously saying, all right, I'm going to do like 40 minutes of, between the, it was just like a, a thing where I would just kind of flow my way, but always being absorbed by the game, you know? Mm -hmm. I was just obsessed by the game, so. Okay. Et puis, vous avez, vous avez gagné combien de championnats durant tes années ou? Pas beaucoup, man, juste un. Juste un. <laughs> <laughs> Mais euh, on, on avait parlé à JD, puis il nous a dit que, je pense en demi-finale, euh, tu pouvais pas dire que ce qui était blessé, you said, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 J'étais blessé, j'avais une grosse foulure de cheville la dernière game de la saison, senior night. So, les provinciaux, c'était juste après. Puis, j'avais dit à l'équipe comme, guys, comme, I love you guys, but unfortunately, I won't be able to play. C'est là que Johnny était comme, non, 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 you're playing. J'étais comme, aïe. <laughs> Mais yo, j'étais, ouais, j'avais une grosse foulure de cheville, puis ouais, j'étais vraiment blessé, là. Oh. Okay. Okay. Puis c'est mm -hmm. quand le recrutement a commencé pour toi? Hein? Yeah. Oh man, moi c'était fou, bonne question. Je peux pas me rappeler consciemment c'était quand, mais je me rappelle juste qu'il y avait des petites écoles qui commençaient à montrer du interest. Puis comme Jaylene disait, comment qui est cette école-là? Genre elle vient t'offrir, je sais comment être cool, cool. Puis ça s'est fait comme graduellement. Puis après ça, comme ça a commencé à build up, mais au, pour de vrai au début, c'était graduel. Uh -huh. So how did you, like, because like I was, I'll say back in the day, it was kind of hard for players to go to the States, right? It was harder mm -hmm. to notice, you know? So how were you, tr how were you able to get noticed by these big schools in the States without, well, I have, yeah. I have to give credit to JD because like at one point, um, one, one of my closest friends was a filmmaker and he like did a highlight tape of me. And then at one point, JD was like, Pierre, like, write me a list of the 25 top schools you want to go to. So I was like, all right. So I just rolled down like Duke, North Carolina, like Arizona, <laughs> yeah. Oregon. And he sent the tapes to those schools. Oh. And it's like, how many coaches do you know yeah. that are going to do that, right? So he would just tell me, all right, they called and they said this. I haven't heard from them. They're interested. They don't care. So it's like, That kind of, I think, really made the difference, like that highlight tape and then the willingness of John to just like send it out and just like be like, you know, whatever, where, how, however far you want to go, like I got your back, we'll go and, as far as you want to. And why did you choose uh, Gonzaga? And did you go on a visit? I went on a visit and uh, I chose Gonzaga because for me it was kind of simple. Like I wanted to play in the NBA and the two guards before me were... Uh, right before me was Blake Stead. The other one was Dan Dickow. They both played in the league. So for me, it's like they have like the formula to help guys make it to the league. So I'm going to end up in the league. Comme ces gars-là. So it's for ça que j'étais à Gonzaga. Comment? Je pensais juste making it to the league. Okay. What, 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 what other schools were you considering? I was, my, my last three schools were Gonzaga, Xavier, and uh georgia but georgia they had like a, a thing with uh the coach that did messed up classes so the guys uh, were suspended for three years of no ncaa tournament so i really yeah. wanted to go to georgia because the conference is the sec is a big i want to yeah. play like a big conference big like good competition but um yeah they were suspended so no ncaa tournament for three years so i'm like ah so that's yeah okay. but yeah that was my last two puis ta première année, c'était comment rentrer à Gonzaga, puis t'as Adam Morrison comme euh, guard. <rire> en plus, cette année-là, il a gagné un play of the year, je pense. Je ça? pense que c'est l'année d'après. Mais ouais, comme moi, je suis arrivé à Gonzaga, yo, sans joke. La première fois que je suis rentré dans le gym, il y avait Ravio, puis Morrison qui shootait. Puis j'étais avec l'assistant coach Tommy Lloyd. Yo, les gars, je te dis, en 10 minutes, je pense qu'ils n'ont pas raté une shot. Comme j'ai checké shooter, ouais. 
ouais, ouais, là, je suis juste comme, yo, dis, comme, what's up? Comme, là, je, je me suis dit, ok, ok, yo, ici, c'est comme, it's une autre game, là, comme, les gars étaient, c'est des machines, so. Jeez, ok, so, Plin, I guess, because we know, we know you had a very successful career in the NCAA, um, can you just walk us through your experience, yeah. Yeah, so, my experience for me, it was kind of like, I went there thinking, like, I'm just gonna see what my role is, fit my role and then at one point because i was the type of guys i said like i'm not just gonna come and be like yo yo it's my personality right uh -huh. so i kind of go and i observe and then i kind of like slowly work my way up but the thing is for them the expectations were we want you to be like an instant like impact player mm -hmm. and for me for some reason it didn't kind of turn out that way so um the expectations they had and what i was providing wasn't really fitting So at one point, they kind of looked past me and said, like, yo, we're just going to, like, recruit over you, which is what happened. Okay. Mais, mais, mais on a vu que, mais comme je, je regardais tes stats line et tout, tu as quand même start quoi, quatre, quatre games, euh, ta première année, ta deuxième année, tu jouais comme 20 minutes. Puis aussi, je so pense... Oh, non, oui. Quoi? So, ouais, première année, j'ai j'ai start peut-être quatre games, mais deuxième année, j'ai start presque toute la saison. Yeah. C'est ça, c'est ça. Puis, euh, on a vu, je, je regardais sur YouTube, tu as eu un buzzer beater, Adam Harrison était double, il t'a passé la balle. Ouais. Buzzer beater, c'était contre quelle, quelle équipe et comment tu te sentais? On dirait, à, à, je, je regardais ta réaction après la chasse. Yeah, your reaction was... That, that's me. That's me, man. <laughs> Yo, I, no emotion. Like, no emotion. I'll be going crazy. You just shot no, it, you just man. walked away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that shot, I have to thank my coach because, like, my coach said they might double team Adam, so be ready in case you get the ball. So when the, I was ready to shoot, so I, I have to give credit to my coach for that, man. Okay, and um, so uh, once again, because we're, we're talking about the challenges, was it challenging going from Champlain to Gonzaga? For me, the most challenging part, to be honest, was like I had a relationship with like John, Peter, Steve White, and the whole staff, Rani at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Gonzaga, like, for some reason, I don't know if it's the, the culture is different in the States, but, like, I didn't really have a relationship with my coaches. Mm -hmm. So, for me, that was the toughest part. Like, I'm used to just talking to coach after game and being like, yo, what's up? Like, what do you see? What did I do? And then when I got there, it's like, I didn't feel that. So, I, for me, that was the toughest part. Like, on a human level, not mm -hmm. so much basketball, but, like, mm -hmm. just feeling like, yo, like, I'm a human being. and That part was tough for me. Yeah, okay. definitely. Puis, uh, juste rapidement, est-ce que tu veux parler, ça, comme, parce qu'on a parlé de Jenny, comment P.Y. t'a aidé, comment Steve White t'a aidé, puis Yo, autre, P.Y. C'était uh, comment jouer au March Magnus, so, deux, deux questions. OK, so, comment P.Y. puis tout ça m'ont aidé, puis après, OK. So, yeah. moi, comme P.Y., c'était pour moi, c'était vraiment un, un anchor. Parce que P.Y., il était un peu comme moi, il était quiet, il ne parlait pas trop, puis il n'était pas vraiment in your face, il était comme smooth dans sa façon de parler. Mais il te disait exactement ce que tu avais besoin d'entendre, puis il y avait les tough conversations avec toi. Puis ça, c'est quelque chose que des années plus tard, je comme, yo, si j'avais un P.Y. à Gonzaga, ça aurait été plus facile parce que P.Y., comme il va te le dire, ce que même si tu ne veux pas l'entendre, il va te le dire. Mais il n'y a pas beaucoup de gens qui ont les bases de juste de dire ce que tu ne veux pas entendre. Beaucoup de gens vont juste rien dire. Mm -hmm. Mais puis, ouais, va avoir le tough conversation, mais d'une façon que tu comprends, he has your best interest at heart. So, puis, ouais, m'a vraiment aidé dans son sens. Comme quand on était au OK, yo, genre, telle affaire comme demain, il faut que tu joues vraiment bien parce que tel coach, comme, he, he would like paint the situation, tu avais juste besoin de rentrer puis execute. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, so, so, so. Puis, uh, Steve White, c'était comme oh, l'espèce le, de jug. Hein? Oh, Steve White, yeah. ouais, Steve White, c'était comme le juggler. Comme lui, lui s'assurait que, genre, tout, comme n'importe quoi que j'avais besoin, Steve White le faisait. Comme <rire> il s'assurait, OK, on a besoin de telle affaire, Steve White allait. C'est comme un genre de. Ça, c'est le genre de personne, personne. Les gens, ils pensent pas, ils donnent pas de crédit, mais sans des gens de même, t'as pas d'équipe de basket. Mais c'est pas mon succès. Yeah, yeah. Puis, March Madness. Moi, ça la fout, mais j'étais un peu déçu parce que quand j'étais petit, c'était comme mon rêve. Puis quand j'étais arrivé, il y a comme que j'ai comme fait comme ah c'est juste ça le March Madness. Comme je me suis pas rendu au Elite. Apparemment que le Elite c'est là que ça devient huge parce que comme tout le monde est à la même place. Mais moi, quand j'étais là, c'était comme t'as huit équipes dans ce court là, t'as huit équipes. 
monde est spread out. So, c'est pas comme le vibe tournament où est-ce que tout le monde est à la même place, you okay, know? Yeah. So, pour moi, it was like, it was kind of strange. Okay. But like, the experience is, is, is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I feel like it's more made for TV than for actually, like, oh, for actually at the beginning, sure. at the beginning, yeah. not like Elite Eight and Final Four, but uh, like at the beginning, it's more for TV okay. than for... And if, and if okay. I remember, uh, yeah, um, if I remember, um, there was a game that I guess is a pretty famous game that uh, Gonzaga lost. <laughs> Yeah, so you can walk yeah, us through that game. Oh, you, you, were, uh, you were playing that game against UCLA? Yo, yeah, that yeah. game. Okay, so what happened? Yo, that game, I have a little <laughs> story. Like, yo, that game. So we're up by like 17 and a half. And I go to the locker room and I see guys are kind of happy, like hyped up. And I'm like, so I tell guys, I'm like, yo, guys, we still have another half to play, like relax. And like, I'm not going to say his name. So one of my team was like, yo, 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 it's shut up. Like, it's all good. We got this. And I was like, all right. But like, I could sense we were be becoming a little bit more too overconfident. And like, you know, in basketball, yeah, anything. in anything, when you're yeah. overconfident. Yeah. So my coach gets there, he starts talking. And then he goes like, uh, what he said, guys, we're 20 minutes away from the Elite Eight, right before. And when he said that, that's when I'm like, oh, like this is going to be tough because, yeah, man. So guys were kind of like relaxing. So I'm yeah. like, I didn't like that vibe. And it's one of the reasons why when I play like no emotion, because it's like you can't show emotions when you're playing. Like you can't relax when you're playing. No. J'écoutais un podcast que Adam Harrison parlait, puis il parlait de cette game-là, puis il disait que s'il y a comme 100 choses, 100 choses qui devaient aller mal pour vous pour perdre, les 100 choses comme se sont comme passées, comme, comme turnover, bad shot, tout, ouais. tout, tout. En même temps, me... <rire> c'est vraiment vrai, comme c'était un genre de cauchemar parce que tu regardais le clock, il restait comme 3 minutes, tu es comme « OK, on est bon ». Puis tu regardes le clock, il reste comme 30 secondes, puis t'es comme, OK, on est bon. <rire> puis, first, mais cette équipe-là était stacked. Hein? T'avais Aaron Aflalo, uh, Darren Collison, euh, le grand, j'ai oublié son Allen, nom. Allen. Exactement, Luke Mamboute, euh, Jordan Farmer. So, si on a, au moins on a perdu contre une équipe, comme, OK, les gars, comme on vous le donne, votre équipe est stacked. Comme c'est une grosse équipe. En plus, mais, il y a... En plus, il y a une fameuse picture Adam Harrison qui pleure avec son chandail. Euh... Ouais, ouais, ça c'était, ça c'était comme, ouais, parce que tu sais, c'était le meilleur, c'est le meilleur joueur yeah. in the country, right? Yeah. Il avait eu comme une saison, je pense, 28, 29 points a game, c'est comme. Uh -huh. So ouais, c'est un peu triste de finir une saison comme ça quand t'es like the top player in the country. Alors... Um, Et yeah, yeah, puis aussi, yeah, c'était it... Et aussi, c'était comment? Hein, Qu'est-ce qu'il parlait que? Can you cut it? I'm cutting. Yeah, okay, good now, you're good. You're good. Okay. Non, Adam Russell aussi parlait qu'il trouvait que c'était vraiment étouffant que cette saison-là, tout, tout le monde savait qu'il allait être dans l'NBA puis comme il était traité comme une rock star. Est-ce que c'était juste lui qui était traité comme une rock star ou c'était toute, toute l'équipe? Parce qu'il trouvait que c'était un peu étouffant. Euh, wow. so, c'était juste lui ou comme vous, vous étiez tous traités comme des rock stars? Lui, lui, avec genre ESPN, la télé et tout ça, mais comme nous, comme équipe, dans la ville de Spokane, on était des rockstars. C'est ça. Comme, ouais. Parce que Spokane, c'est une petite ville, puis ils n'ont pas d'équipe de football dans la NFL, ils n'ont pas d'équipe professionnelle. So, nous, on était comme les gars de la ville. So, moi, quand j'ai su que Spokane, c'était un, un autre vibe, c'était un moment donné, après une game, je marche dans la rue, je vois une madame de genre 85 ans, puis elle me dit... « Oh, good game, P-Mac. » Là, je sais comme... « What? <rire> » Comme un 85-year-old woman mm -hmm. dans la rue t'arrête comme « Yo, good game. » T'es comme « Ok, yo, comme je suis dans une autre, mm -hmm. dans une autre place. » yeah, Mais ouais, yeah. c'était toute l'équipe à Spokane. Qui ok. So, um, so, we know after you played three years at Gonzaga yeah. and then you went on to go to Marshall. So, what, what made you transfer to go to Marshall? Man, so like my first year wasn't too good. Second year, I started the whole season. And then it's like at the end of the season, like um coaches were happy like coach Hugh was talking to like a whole bunch of people he's like yo we're proud of you you had a great season we have high expectations for next year so in my mind i'm like man like i started my whole year as a sophomore i got two more years like my plan might like i'm gonna i'm gonna play in the league yeah but then my third year like i felt like it, it was just different and at that point i realized like man i can't stay here because 
it was compromising my future. Like if, if I'm not really playing and I'm going to go into my senior season, like I have no chance. Yeah. So after the season, like I was like, all right, man, I'm going to have to like do what's best for me and, and leave, even though I didn't want to leave. But uh -huh. um, at one point I felt like it was just the best thing for me because as a player, you kind of feel your way through things and you kind of know when, okay, here's an opportunity for me. And like when, you know what, like I don't really see eye to eye, like maybe it's time for me to move on. And I felt that. So I decided to go to Marshall, mainly Marshall. Like it sounds, it sounds kind of, but like Cole Jones was the head coach. It was his first year and he recruited me when he was at Florida. So for okay. me, it was like, okay. it's the coach's first year I'm transferring. And it's like, I'm coming in with a new coaching staff. So yeah. I'm not going to feel like I'm an alien. Like everything's kind of new. new yeah. So it was, it was fun for me to be in a situation where it's like new for everyone. OK. OK. Puis je sais, attends, ta dernière année à Gonzaga, t'as joué avec uh, Jeremy Pargo, right? Yeah. Deux, ouais. mes, ma, mes deux dernières années sont sophomore puis junior. J'ai joué avec lui. OK. okay. Puis après, Pargo. il était dans l'NBA. Mais OK, mais c'est comment ton expérience à Marshall? Comme as, ton année à Marshall, c'était comment? Yeah, he cut. Euh, c'était comment ton expérience à Marshall? Marshall, pour une raison, je ne peux pas expliquer, mais comme c'est la vie, il n'y a pas de... Je sais pas pourquoi les choses arrivent, mais comme ma première game, je me suis... J'ai eu une blessure à la cheville vraiment grave. Puis, j'étais un peu fâché parce que j'étais comme, man, comme I'm transferring and like this is my time and like I'm getting hurt the first game. J'étais comme, j'aurais dû me blesser à Gonzaga ma dernière année quand je ne vais pas beaucoup, right? J'étais comme, why now, tu sais? Comme, là, j'étais en, en, en in crutches for like two months. Puis Cole Jones, il a dit, yo, we, we need you to play. Mais j'étais comme, bro, I'm, I'm in crutches. Donc, so, je pense que je suis revenu trop vite. Puis les coachs m'avaient dit, comme, parce que mon, mon ankle injury, c'était un injury, c'était comme, j'aurais pu soit red shirt, puis comme, jouer l'année d'après, parce que le sprain était vraiment grave. Okay. Ou jouer. Mais comme, après un an que j'avais pas vraiment joué, moi, j'étais comme, yo, I just want to hoop. Like, I don't care. I'm just going to play. Mais pendant la saison, je me suis rendu compte, à un moment donné, je suis comme, yo, comme, maybe I shouldn't have come back, parce que, J'étais plus explosif, j'étais plus athlétique. Puis en plus, avec toute l'espèce le, de comme... Tout ce que j'avais vécu à Gonzaga, mentalement, je n'étais pas prêt à comme... Parce que déjà, un injury, c'est tough, mais en plus, comme il faut, il faut que tu sois capable de, de, de compenser ton injury avec comme ton mental. Mais à ce moment-là de ma vie, mon mental n'était pas là. Sauf okay. pour moi, c'était comme... c'était pas une bonne année non plus. OK. Oh, okay. yeah. That's what happened to me. And... Um... Um, so after so you played at Marshall, so after Marshall, did you were, were your plans still to go to the league? Or oh, always, you, man. Yeah. What? <laughs> so, what? Okay, so yeah, yeah, tell us, so, walk us through it. Yeah. So yeah, after Marsh, after Marshall, like this is this is a little bit strange, but that's what happened. So I went to the D League pre draft camp, and I was like, "Yo, let me play the D League." So first day of camp, it's a two day camp. So first day of camp, I didn't play too well. So second down, I'm like, man, I don't care what I, I got to play like the best basketball in my life. Like this is no joke. So the second day I played well. And then like I got a call from the team at the time that was like the defending champs of the D-League, the Idaho Stampede. So they're like, yo, we have a tryout in Toronto. We want, we want to see you there. Come. So I'm like, all right. So I went to the tryout in Toronto. So yeah, it was 125 guys. It cut down to four. I'm one of the last four. Oh. So blah, 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 blah. So then coach talks to me after and he's like, yo, we really like your game, but, and I'm like, but, and he's like, we didn't really get good references from you from Gonzaga. Oh. So I'm like, what happened? Like what, what was being said? And he kind of told me a little bit. So I'm like, listen, man, I don't know what, what they're saying, what's going on. But all I got to say is that at the time that I was there, I was mainly like a shooting guard and like my natural position is point guard. So like, just, just know that maybe if I wasn't comfortable, because that's one thing I learned afterwards. It's like, as a player, you have to know what your strengths are. And I feel like even though I had good intentions and I played hard, like I didn't really know my game like that. Like you have to know, like, are you more comfortable playing this position or that position? Like what makes you great? And at the time I didn't know. So I was kind of like, Just thinking by working hard and doing what I was supposed to, I was going to like make it. But you also have to be smart and know yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Damn. So that was one of my biggest mistakes. Damn. Like just so, not knowing, like, yeah. Yeah. So were you shocked that 
you're 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 trying out for D League team, and they went back and they went back all the way to Gonzaga to for your references. That kind of that's what messed you up. To I mean, I was kind of shocked, but like as a human being, I don't know yeah. why I'm built this way. I always feel like th this is just a this is just like a next thing. Like mm. I was gonna say, this is just a stepping stone. But no matter what happens in life, it's like yo, that can't stop you. You know. Yeah. So for me, it's like all right, this is whack, but that's not going to stop me from accomplishing what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay. as I... Huh? No, good. I just said, what did you decide to do after? So after that, what I decided to do is to make a contract, right? But the thing is that you have to sign with an agent. Mm -hmm. Then the agents what they do is they check your stats. So the agents were like, okay, yo, you're going to play Gonzaga, great, but yo, two points per game, three points per game, they're like, yo, I can't take it. So I was like, yeah, but yo, I'm going to play for a big team in the next one. And then I was like, man, at the end of the day, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, comme, à la fin de la comme, c'est bien cool, je joue pour une grosse équipe et tout, mais c'est comme, yo, si tu veux être un pro, comme, stats, talk, right? Ton, yeah. ton CV, ton bulletin, ton whatever, c'est tes stats. C'est là que moi, j'étais comme, man, parce que moi, j'étais pas conscient de ça. Moi, j'étais juste, you know, a young man, just trying to accomplish my dream, puis je faisais les choses comme je pouvais, comme je tentais que je devais les faire. Mais à la fin de la c'est comme, faut que tu sois smart aussi, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Et, et... Everything happened for a reason. Mais si tu pourrais revenir à quand tu étais à ta dernière année à Champlain, est-ce que peut-être tu aurais été à une école peut-être plus bas puis avoir plus de stats comme ça, tu pourrais peut-être tu aurais pu aller jouer pro ou tu aurais refait la même décision puis ça t'a donné la Ça, c'est une grosse question parce que quel, quel compétiteur retourne pas en arrière? Tu sais, comme, as a competitor, même après des pratiques, tu, tu retournes puis tu es comme yo. Quand le gars me euh, fait, il me cross sur ce jeu-là, j'aurais dû mettre ma main, puis c'est comme, so you always look back, t'es comme, yo, j'aurais dû, j'aurais dû, j'aurais dû, mais, if there's one thing I learned, parce que Gonzaga, c'était vraiment ma décision, if there's one thing I learned, c'est que dans la vie, quand tu prends une décision comme ta décision, whether it goes right or wrong, at the end of the day, t'es comme, at the moment, that's what I felt. So, mm -hmm. it's fine. Moi, c'est ça que j'ai appris, parce que, imagine, j'aurais pas vraiment pris la décision avec mon cœur, puis ça aurait marché comme ça le marché, mais ce sentiment, j'aurais dit, oh. Mais j'ai suivi mon gut. So, une fois que tu as suivi ton gut, t'es comme, yo, if it works, great, but if it doesn't, c'est comme, that's what I wanted. So, mm -hmm. c'est comme, pour moi, il n'y a pas de, no regrets. Mm -hmm. No regrets. I'd rather fail following my gut than, than yeah. fail just, oh, I should have, you know? So, yeah. okay. Est-ce que tu est aurais peut-être un message pour les jeunes qui rentrent NCA, comme qu'est-ce que ça serait quoi un message que ou un message à Yann oh, ouais. Pimac yeah, you know. <rire> Yo, un, mis, un message pour les jeunes qui veulent jouer NCA pour moi ce serait comme quand tu te fais quand tu vas à une place il faut que tu t'assures que ce que les gens s'attendent de toi ça align avec ce que toi tu as envie de faire parce que si tu fais pas ça toi tu as envie de faire X eux, ils veulent que tu fasses Z. Là, frustration commence d'un côté, de l'autre. Puis là, c'est comme, à un moment donné, il y, a trop, il y a trop de friction. Tandis que si toi, tu t'attends quelque chose de moi, puis moi, je veux faire ce que tu t'attends que je veux faire, we're, we're going to be aligned. Puis when things are aligned, it's smooth. Toi, tu veux, tu veux que la transition soit... Tu veux que les choses soient smooth. Quand les choses sont smooth, tu es, es dans la game, tu joues... Tu sais, c'est comme, tu te sens pas pareil que quand c'est comme, ah oh non, voilà, puis fait, puis t'es comme, tu comprends ça? So, moi, je dirais à n'importe quel jeune, comme, assure-toi que you guys see eye to eye exactly, you know? Mm -hmm. it, makes it, it makes it a lot more fun and interesting. Fun, huh? Yeah, well said, though. Um, so, um, after, I guess, when you tried to play pro, um, how, so, did you play pro or did you just, like... Pro, man, that pro thing, man, I tried for, like, five years and nothing was really working mm -hmm. so then at one point like i was in uh, spain like in the fifth division in spain like terrible and then uh at the time i, I was also picking up on art because uh there was like an art school near my house so i, mm -hmm. I was an artist like starting to do sculptures mm -hmm. and one of my teachers was like yo i heard you're, you're like you're a great player but he's like um if i was you i'd go to france and i was like why he's like I don't know. He's like, how many black people do you see on the Spanish national team? I'm like, one, Serge Ibaka. He's like, how many black people do you see on the French national team? I'm like, nine. So he's like, go to France. <laughs> I'm like, all right. 
So I get on the phone with uh, JP Batista. He was my teammate at Gonzaga. And he's like, bro, anytime you have a house, like you can come by anytime you want. So I'm like, I went there. Yo, the guy hooked me up with everything. Like I had an agent, I had tryouts. Within two weeks, I did in France what I didn't do for like two years in Spain. Wow. So like I had two teams that wanted me and I was just like, like kind of like God was just like, go ahead, man, do your thing. So my year in France was the only year where I could say like, I really had a contract and things were like, like kind of like official yeah. and right. And you know, so. And you're okay. And then you say, you say you took art, um, artists. So can you talk us about, about that a bit? Yeah, man. When I was young in high school, like for me, paying attention in class was like the toughest thing in the world. The yeah. last thing I wanted to do was sit and like listen to teachers speak. Mm -hmm. So like in my notebooks, I was always like drawing, like while my teachers would speak, I'm drawing, drawing, drawing. And then when I was in Spain, like there was an art school. So I was like, hey, might as well just check it out. So I went there. And uh, it's kind of, it, it was like a yeah. transformative moment in my life because I was at a sculpture class and then the class is finished at 9 p.m. And it was like, I'm working, working, working. And then the, um, the janitor walks in, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm working. He's like, bro, it's 9.15. Everyone, and I look around and I'm like, everyone was gone. And like, I didn't hear the bell ring. I, so as I'm walking back home, I'm like, yo, me staying after the bell rings. Like when I was in school, all I did was wait for the bell to ring. So I'm like, there's something here. Yeah. So that's when I kind of understood like, oh, this art thing might be for me. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Now, you do that like every day? Like, it's, it's, that's... Mais, yeah, now, now. Quand j'ai fini de jouer au basket, c'était un choc parce que j'avais commencé à 4 ans, je finis à 30 ans, mais pendant 26 ans, c'était comme basket, basket, basket. So, du jour au lendemain, comme, t'es comme, yo, comme, qu'est-ce que je fais de ma vie? Puis ça, c'est un autre, c'est un autre, un autre conseil que j'aurais pour les jeunes, c'est comme, c'est, quand tu fais quelque chose, tu fais à 100%. Moi, je crois pas aux gens qui disent comme, OK, quand tu fais quelque chose, mais we're all different. Like for someone like me, having a plan A, B, C, D, E, F does not work. Like I need to put all my attention into one thing. Other people, it's different. So I would say kind of see what type of person you are. But I think as you're doing your basketball, you always have to keep in mind, like the goal for sure is to make it to the NBA. But like at the end of the day, basketball is just kind of like a sternutsi. À travers le basket, you learn who you are, you mm -hmm. learn what you like, you learn how do you how do you react in, uh, in, in pressure situations, you learn who your friends are, you learn so much that basketball is not like an end goal, but it's the tool that allows you to know who you are so that after you play, no matter what you do, you're well equipped and you have weapons to like, okay, I know I work good in these situations, that's not for me. So yeah, that that would be like for me the fundamental thing. Like basketball is the tool to mm -hmm. to know about you and the world. That's what's up. That's up. I really like I really like how you said that because uh, for sure there's a lot of kids that just play basketball and don't do nothing else. You know, yeah. and then they don't know that at some point basketball comes to an end. You know, and they can exactly. use basketball to go do something else. You know, so like I like I like, really like that. I really like that. So yeah, that's and I was one of those guys. Nothing like. When I put my mind into something, it's like, bro, like the yeah. world could collapse. I'm still, right? Yeah. So even teachers at the time were like, yo, you got to think after basketball. And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> and looking back, you're like, they were right. But the thing yeah. is, when I've been in those shoes and I know yeah. what it's like to have something yeah. that's in your heart and you work every day of your life yeah. for the last 16, 17 years. So it's like, I understand both mm -hmm. sides. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I still feel like, if you learn about yourself, you'll be a better basketball player, you'll be a better husband, you'll be a better friend, you'll be a better everything. So for me, that should be like the number one thing, like learning about yourself through yeah. everything. Okay. Uh, so, so. Uh, Seth, you want to play the game or you have... Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm good, yeah, man. Okay, so avant qu'on qu finisse l'interview, on va jouer comme un, un jeu, j'ai un jeu, puis c'est un jeu. Donc, my game is, you have to name me your top five best player that you play with. So, le best point guard que tu as joué avec, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, les centers que tu as joué avec. <laughs> quand, wait, quand tu dis the best, tu veux dire comme the best ou comme the most talented? The best. 
best best que t'as joué avec, genre. Yeah, the play that you know, you're like, I'll, you would play with them again and again and again. Uh, yeah. Mais c'est ton oh choix. Oh my God. Yo, c'est tough. <laughs> okay, so, pour moi, the best point guard. Yo, moi, je dirais, mais moi, je suis quelqu'un quand même, j'ai mes opinions et tout. Moi, je dirais que le meilleur guard avec qui j'ai joué, c'est euh, Mohamed Achad. Moi, je dirais. Okay. Comme, in terms of, like, skill pis tout ça, moi, je dirais que c'est lui. Okay. Shooting guard, moi, je dirais Morrison. Je mettrais Morrison en shooting guard. En trois, je mettrais... Yo, j'ai un blanc de mémoire. Je sais pas ce qu'il meurt en trois avec qui j'ai joué de ma vie. Puis, euh, en cinq... T'as pas joué avec... Euh, euh, uh, my coach, who played at Davidson. Uh, oh, Max. Max. You didn't play with Max? Ouais, je jouais avec Max. Mais est-ce que c'est le meilleur trois avec lequel je joue toute ma vie? Nigus, non? Oh! Je, je peux pas dire, je peux pas dire, je me bande moi. OK, 4? En 4, moi, je mettrais JP Batista, puis en 5, je mettrais euh, Ronnie Turiaf. Mais ouais. mon 3, je peux pas dire. Mon 3, je peux pas dire. OK. OK. Fair enough. Uh, my game is called start, bench, and cut. I'm going to give you three scenarios, and you got to start one, you got to bench one, and you got to cut one. Okay? So the first scenario is playing for Champlain on, obviously, the team that, you know, got you here. So play for Champlain. Uh, the third one is having an opportunity to play at Gonzaga, all the experiences you've had, so going through March Madness, the cool you play, is... Hmm. I'll say, I'll say the third one is playing in France, that one year in France. Okay. So you got to start one, bench one, and cut one. I'm starting with Gonzaga for sure. Because at the time, yeah. I felt like, why is this happening to me? Because like, when something happens to you so, so drastic, you go, you think like, why? But in hindsight, I'm like, man, if that did not happen, the person I am today... I wouldn't even be close to that. So it's like, yeah. that has to be the number one. Okay. Um, so bench and cut. So my year in France, I'd cut my year in France. And I'd say like Champlain is, uh, yeah, Champlain, Gonzaga, and then my year in France, like I don't need that. Okay. What, um, question right now, when you look at basketball right now, this is my last question. When you look at basketball right now, what do you think, how do you think basketball is around Quebec to what it was when you were playing? Um, I don't I don't really watch basketball in Quebec that much, so I can't I can't really answer that question. I'm just happy when I see guys kind of go far and like play in the league and all that because it's I always felt in my heart like there's no difference between us and guys in the States. I always felt that. But to see it come to fluctuation and see guys actually playing in the league, have an impact and all that, you go, it's it's just the best feeling in the world because I don't believe in limits. I've never believed yeah. in limits and I still don't. So just seeing it to me is like, yo, we need that. It's, it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. And, uh, go, 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 go. and also, like, not to take anything away from people who haven't gone as far as we thought, like myself, for example, because with my experience, I see, like, there's so much more to it than just basketball. There's, you can't just look at a, a, a person's life and say, man, why did he not get there? He must have messed up. Like, that's not the case, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, a good example for me would be the, the documentary, man, the Bulls documentary. Yeah. What, what's, what is it called again? Last Dance. Uh, last Dance. Bro, the Last Dance. You have the best team, arguably, in NBA history, arguably, and it comes to an end. And it's like, you have Jordan, Pippen, Robin, Phil Jack. Like, what? Yeah. And this just comes to show, like, yeah, there's the game of basketball. But there's an other game also, you know, being played at all times. And it's like, you got to balance both. Because mm -hmm. if one is great and the other is bad, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, I think that documentary sheds light on, yo, it's more than just a game. Like, yeah. there's so much more to it. Est-ce que tu as déjà pensé à coacher ou non? Man, yo, dans ma tête, coacher, c'est comme... Moi, j'aime jouer au basket, man. <rire> Moi, j'aime... Yo, quand t'attaches tes souliers, là, avant une pratique ou une game, man, juste t'attaches tes shoes, puis quand tu prends tes deux premiers pas, puis tu prends un ballon, puis ça sent le cuir, puis ah, oh, yo, moi, là, c'est comme... I want to play, man. I don't want to go... Do you still play? 
No, the thing is, at one point, I realized I thought, like, I'm not talented. I thought I was, but I'm not because after I stopped playing, like, people would call me, like, yo, Pierre, bien joué, je suis comme, all right, yo, j'étais pourri, là. So, je suis comme, <laughs> moi, je suis bon si je pratique, you know, je rentre dans le gym, je fais, mais je peux pas juste venir dans un gym qui est nice. So, soit je donne des heures, puis comme je pratique, puis je suis nice, ou c'est comme, à un moment donné, je suis comme, yo, I'm not having fun, like, I'm not good. So it's just like the so I'm not playing anymore. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so I'm, can you get any more? You good? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, but so listen, uh, Pierre, my, um, you're for sure, you're one of the, you know, trendsetters for Quebec basketball. Like I said, you know, you for sure opened doors for players to come out of Montreal to go to the States. You've helped do that. And for sure, you, you, like you said, you had to put Champlain on the map. And now Champlain is like known as a school to go to if you want to go somewhere far, you know, so... And I'll start with people like you. So really appreciate it. That's where I have to get, got, got to, uh, that's where we have to have, have you on here. So yeah. And uh, like Kenny said, people have been asking about you. So, you know, really appreciate about you being here. I'm sure a lot of people are going to learn watching this interview, man. That's cool, man. And I'd like to thank JD, Peter, Steve, all my teammates at Champlain. Like you can't do anything by yourself in this world. Yeah. And at the moment I appreciated it, but now it's like, I see it differently because now I know what it's like when you have people like pushing, supporting your dreams and being on your side and people who are kind of like not really there. So in hindsight, I'm even more thankful because if, if it wasn't for these people, like I would have never played at Gonzaga. So yeah. you, you need a team. You always need a team. And that's that's yeah, I'm just thankful to all these people. Uh, merci, man. Comme, comme on t'a dit depuis le début, chaque semaine, à chaque fois qu'on sort un épisode, OK, puis ma que où, puis ma que où. So, <laughs> <laughs> finally, on a, I guess, l'interview de P-Mac. So, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui vont apprendre de, de ton story et tout, que ce soit basket ou en dehors du basket. Hey, bro, why you can cut it, bro? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mais t'as dit, il y a beaucoup de gens, puis après, ça l'a coupé. Non, j'ai yeah. dit, il y a beaucoup de gens qui vont apprendre de, de cette interview-là, que ce soit basket ou en dehors du basket, um, life lesson. Donc, je suis vraiment content. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Pio, continue à faire votre podcast. C'est bon, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. C'est vraiment important. It's important. Yeah. So, so everyone listening, don't forget to subscribe and uh, give a shout out. Uh, once again, I'm Seth Amor, a.k.a. Essay with Kenny, Kenny Jean-Louis. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs>